All right, let's begin. All right, sorry. That's a formality um, that just had to be done. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, ways to spice up um, some hymns, and I'll dabble in some contemporary Christian songs as well. Um, we'll talk briefly about those um, too. Just some ways to add some character to them and some uniqueness. Um, but first, um, we're going to do a little bit of talking um, together as we kind of get into this topic. Um, I wanted to just share, this is my family, um, so you can see the better half of me. Uh, my wife and four kiddos. Um, so that, there's not five, there's this, one of these is the same. You guys can see there's a correlation there. Um, so uh, it's really hard with four kids um, and two of us to get a picture all together. So I kind of, I should have photoshopped maybe, that would have been, that would have worked. Um, so I live up in Kalispell, Montana. I'm the Worship Arts and Technology Director at Trinity Lutheran Church, um, School, Camp, Child Care, um, all those things. Um, and so um, that's my family. I love um, to do music. We have, at Trinity, we have both a traditional and a contemporary service. So um, on a Sunday morning, we hear organ, um, as well as piano, guitar, drums, all of it. Um, and there was some of you that were at Adam's session last time, that last session. Yeah, so um, he talked a little bit about the um, organ loudness. Um, one way for, um, if people do complain about the loudness of drums, just play the organ with the drums. You can't hear the drums. <laughs> Guaranteed, I've done it before. Um, it works um, like a charm. This is going to take some time, but I think it's really important to this process um, together. So if we could be very fast about it, could you, I'm going to have you each introduce your name, where you're serving it, and then your favorite type of pizza, okay? So we're just going to go around the room, say it really quickly, um, unless your name's like 15 names long then, but the, to the best of your abilities. Let's, let's go along the line this way. Jeremy? Uh, Jeremy Willis. I serve at Trinity Lutheran Church and School in Laconia, Minnesota. Uh, I do contemporary music director at School IT. Um, my favorite type of pizza is probably thin crust pepperoni with cold beer. <laughs> oh, beverage with it, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Colton Hiley, I serve at Risen Savior in Broomfield, Colorado. Favorite type of pizza is Hawaiian. Hawaiian. Okay. Underrated. Uh, do you want to go there? Cool. Ian Moore, I'm at Trinity in Woodway, Texas, near Waco. Favorite pizza is pepperoni. Pep. All right. David Angerman, I'm at Bethany, Austin. I like everything but the fishies. All but fish. Okay. Yeah, Rob Gerlach at Redeemer Lutheran in Austin, Texas. And mine is Mediterranean pizza. Mediterranean chicken. 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 Brony. All right, we're going to add plus one there. I'm Debbie Schutzler. I'm a, a Good Shepherd in Edgewood, New Mexico. Okay. And I like Supreme. Supreme. All right, so we're going to add another to Supreme. Okay, awesome, awesome. <laughs> I'm back. It's James Travis, Sioux City, Iowa, Calvary Lutheran Church. And I like Hawaiian as well. Hawaiian, all right. We'll add that over here. All right. Nice. Dolan, um, Price Lincoln, Lincoln, Nebraska. Cool, yeah. Um, I know that place. I'm going with Margarita. Margarita. Wait, this was pizza, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, both, I'll say. Margarita pizza with a margarita. How, how do you spell margarita? <laughs> I guess. Okay. <laughs> That's a long order. <laughs> All right, <laughs> next up. Sherry Blasek with Emmanuel Lutheran in Crystal Lake, Illinois, and Margarita. Margarita, okay. So anything, any, <laughs> including fish or no fish? No fish. Okay, we have one for all but fish then again. All right. And 
Yeah, uh, in the back there. Alex Falls, I'm the worship director at Prince of Peace in Palatine, Illinois. And it's got to be about the cross. It's got a Chicago cross. Chicago toppings don't matter? Nope. Chicago black crust? Did you say thin? Crust. Yeah, thin. Did you say thin? Yeah. Okay, that... Isn't that what they... Is that like a jumbo shrimp? It's an oxymoron? Where, they're thinking about deep dish. Yeah, isn't that Chicago? Yeah. But Chicago thin Okay. All right. Fair enough. I learned something new today. Uh, Eric Robinson. I'm at Christ Lutheran in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And, I mean, within kind of the bounds of sanity, I just hate it. <laughs> so fish. But fish? You mean like anchovies? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so anything. All right. Anything. All right. What do you got back there? Gordon Russell, director of music ministry at King and King's Open Church in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Oh, Nice. No fish or anything, all but fish. Okay. All right, let's start over here. Me? Yeah. So, um, I'm Emma Tiemann. I am the contemporary worship leader at Grace Celebration Lutheran Church in okay. Memphis, Tennessee. And my favorite type of pizza is barbecue chicken. Barbecue chicken. All right. <laughs> Next up. Uh, my name is Dave Kaler. And I work with and lead our praise team at Emmanuel Lutheran, Cedar Falls, Iowa. Oh, nice. And I like Supreme. Supreme. So we got one for Supreme. All right. I'm Julie Nizinski. Um, I'm at Lamb of God in Axu, Arizona. And I would say Margarita. Margarita. All right. John Gruen, pastor at Beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Lee Summit, Missouri. How about those Chiefs? Uh, I make a Chicago deep dish pizza that my family says is better than Giordano's. So John's custom pizza, okay. (laughs) Chicago deep dish is Chicago. Oh, deep dish. All right, we'll just go back around there. Nice. And pizza? Um, Supreme. Okay, we got another one for Supreme. All right, next up. Um, my name is Gary Atkinson. I serve in uh, Bethlehem SCB in California. And my favorite pizza would be Cisco Margarita. Margarita again. Wow. All right. I'm Darlene Frenham, and I'm a substitute organist in various churches around where I live in southern Minnesota. And my favorite is Hawaiian. Hawaiian as well. Okay, awesome. And let's go back there. Uh, Ann Nimer from Grace Lutheran in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm-hmm. And I live in Chicago, but I like to live in Green Olives. Pepperoni and Green Olives. We'll start a new column for that. Pepperoni <laughs> Green <laughs> Olives. All right, next. Alicia Crespo. I'm at Grace in Jacksonville, uh, a school music teacher, and then I'm uh, Church music musician at Bethlehem at Jackson Beach. And I'm going to do pepperoni, mushroom, and onion. Pepperoni, mushroom. And what was the last one? Onion. Onion, all right. Sweet. Richard Smith, uh, music director of temporary service at Bethlehem Lutheran, Jackson Beach, Florida. And uh, meat pizza. Just meat pizza? Meat pizza. Meat. Pizza. Love it. Sue Hunter, I'm a transplanted Iowa, by the way. And I am here at Christ Green Brooklyn down in Gilbert. Okay. Nice. And pizza? Sausage and mushroom. Sausage and mushroom. That's one of my faves. All right. And we'll go back to Heather. Oh, uh, Heather, Dennis, and uh, California, and uh, barbecue chicken. Barbecue chicken? Ooh. Shane Welter, uh, St. Luke's Federal Way, Washington, and Barbecue Chicken as well. What? My people. Lauren <laughs> <laughs> Welter, also St. Luke's the Federal Way, Washington, and my favorite, I'm going with Team Hawaiian pizza. Team Hawaiian back there. Okay. It's in tied for the lead. All right. Um, Amy Antor, um, Contemporary Worship Leader at Emanuel Lutheran in Crystal Lake, Illinois, and I'm Hawaiian. Okay, Hawaiian has now taken the lead. Not that this is a competition. Uh, Paul Fadazzo, Minister of Music at Trinity Lutheran Clinton Township, Michigan. 
And I, I felt like I might have been alone, but Meat Lover's Pizza. Meat Lover's Pizza, all right. And we got a couple in the back. Um, can you share your name, where you're from, and then your favorite type of pizza? Barbecue chicken. All right. I'm uh, Joel. I'm from East Vail, California, Edgewater. Uh, my favorite type of pizza is the Ben Wine. Hawaiian. Hawaiian. All right. Sarah Hill, same church. Also Hawaiian. Hawaiian also. All right. Wow. Pepperoni and ham. And last? Um, I'm Anita Burnham from Denver, Colorado, and I don't eat pizza. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just raise the song. <laughs> All right. I'm so glad you said that. Um, awesome. There is a purpose to this. You all thought you were getting into a music talk, but really we're going to talk about food today um, uh, to start us off. Do you notice, look at how many different toppings there are. How many different flavors there are. Do you guys see where I'm going with this? Yeah, y'all know what's up. Y'all do work in church music. You've heard that one person says, I, I hate that, that you played it that way or whatever. Um, styles can be very polarizing um, in our churches. And so we have to be aware of some of those flavors and the context we put them in. Also, I'm going to be ordering all these pizzas after the talk as well. Um, so... Also, before we get into jumping into music, I want you to find a neighbor and I want you to describe to them your favorite type of pizza. Just briefly, you have 10 seconds for that, and then describe um, a pizza type that you absolutely hate. Okay? Go. And bring it back in five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Now you know your neighbor better. So as we're talking about different styles and adding textures and colors to um, our songs in a unique way, use caution with it, okay? Use caution. Um, use it in moderation as well. Um, but at the same time, too, you have to use enough variation so you don't have a pocket of too much flavor. Um, Y'all have been there when you've had a, a bite of soup and it had all like the basil in it or whatever, and all you taste is basil. It didn't make it to the rest of it. So that's important as well. Um, and the last question I have for you guys before we start hopping into a hymn is how many piano players do we have out there? Awesome. How many organists do we have? Awesome. How many guitarists? Vocalists? Y'all should be raising your hands, right? We all. Uh, percussionists? Kazoos. Ayo. Okay. Y'all are lying. Nobody, nobody plays that in church, right? All right. So, um, we're going we're gonna to take apart Come Thou Fount and look at some ways to alter Come Thou Fount to add some flavor to it. Um, so, we're going to start with the basic hymn. Can you guys read that? Can you guys sing that for me? We're going to sing that in C. Here we go. Come thou fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise. While the 
above endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Teach me ever to adore Thee. May I still Thy goodness prove. Very nice. You all have lovely voices. Wonderful. So that's in a traditional setting, right? That's kind of somewhat four-part harmony, right? I'm not very great at playing it exactly as written, so um, pardon the uh, few changes there. Um, so the first step is... Um, in a level two is we change it to a simple progression. Um, Can you turn your piano up because if we sing, we cover the sound. Yes, yes I can. Um, thank you for mentioning that. Um, I'm trying to use this funky iPad tool that a friend of mine um, dropped off, which is super awesome. Um, so to start off, um, is as we look at this song, we see at the beginning of each measure what note there is. Um, and in making a progression or changing the progression, we can take a look at these notes in the context of the triads they're in. Do you guys, do you guys know what tri a triad is? Right. So it's the three notes together. Um, so if we take um, C, for instance, that first one, what are all the triads that C would be in? C, E, G, E. C. So C, E, G, right? C, E, G. A minor, right? There's my A and then an E. And then what else? F. And then F? Do I hear F? So let me go up for that one. So this is a C up here. F, is that it? <laughs> We're not there. Okay, okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on with the Hawaiian yet. We're not there. All right, so let's take some of those. So C, uh, all right, this has just got to go. <laughs> um, so C. Right, it's just that basic. Say we switch to an A minor. Dove every, right? A little bit different start. Or F. Come now, fount of every. Right, those are three different options. And we've only exhausted one measure. Isn't that cool? So we look at the D. What are three, um, what are three triads that D is a part of? D minor. D minor. I'm going to just write them out this time so you don't have to look. Nope, there's no B flat and C. G. G. G major. And what else? B diminished? Yes. B diminished. Not there yet. We're not to Hawaiian pizza yet. Okay, we're still on, this is like pepperoni right now, okay? We're, we're chilling with pepperoni for a little bit. So, let's say we start with that. Start with the C, go to G. That's the one that makes the most sense, right? To our ears. What if we start with a F, come now, fount of every blessing. And go to that G. Can you guys sing that with me? Come now, fount of every blessing. How did that feel different from the traditional harmonization? Can you use some descriptor words? It didn't feel like the beginning. It didn't feel like the beginning. Yeah. Okay. It felt like it was starting to ascend. Okay, it was ascending, moving upward. It's very 80s pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, a little bit of that vibe going on. Right? So, okay, so what if instead of starting on the, um, instead of starting on the F, we start on the A minor? What if we do, and then what if we go to the B, or no, is it B, B diminished? Let's try that. Sing it with me. Come thou fount of every blessing. Ooh, how did that feel? That's a little funky, right? Maybe that might be, that's like sauerkraut on a Hawaiian pizza, maybe. Like that pineapple and that sauerkraut, they didn't mix. So, all right, so let's see. Um, so let's say we start with C and then go to, let's try D minor next. And then let's talk about the, the A there. What are the triads that A is a part of? A minor. A minor. What else? F major. F major and D minor. D minor, right? Ooh, we already had a D minor. Look at that. So let's say we go C to D minor to 
F major. And then let's do the last one, and then we'll put it all together. So we have another C. We already discovered what C was a part of, right? C, A minor, F. Um, who wants to hear a C at the end? Raise your hand. Who wants to hear an A minor? Who wants to hear an A minor at the end? And who wants to hear an F at the end? I think F1. All right, so we're going to, we're just, yeah, so we're just staying in place, right? All right. You guys chose this, all right? You have to live with your choices. All right, let's sing this, okay? Here we go, one, two. And come now, fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy praise. Yeah, how did that feel? I liked it, I like it. Yeah? Yeah, we have, oh well, yes, we have a lot, yes. So, um, by just changing that into more of a simple progression instead of that. Your guitarist friends are going to love you for that, okay? Um, nothing is worse than being a guitarist and trying to play a hymn where it changes every single chord, right? Can I get an amen? Can I get a preach pastor? Come on now. Uh, because um, honestly, that's part of the, the purpose for recontextualizing some of these hymns is for the sake of our guitarist friends to make them easier. Um, as an organist, who are, where are my organists in here? Yeah, wow, we have a lot of organists. Um, this, in the same way, you can take that progression and play on an organ and there's less motion as well. Um, it almost creates like a pad effect going on with the instrument. You just have to make sure that melody line pops out over the top, so switching manuals and stops and whatever that, I'm not very well versed in organ stuff, but whatever you do to make one manual louder than the other, that helps out a ton. Uh, we're gonna keep trucking through this one. Um, oh, actually, yeah, we're gonna skip this for now. Um, so what happens when we add sevenths and ninths to the chords? Um, we get more of a that kind of effect. So go ahead and sing that first line. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune thy heart to sing thy grace. Yeah, so it just adds a little bit more depth to those notes. All it is is taking the same chord, so here just a basic C, a G, an F, and then back to a C, and playing those with voicings of a seventh and ninth mixed in there. So do you guys know where, where those sit on the keyboard a little bit? On organ, um, that's a little bit more challenging as an instrument. Your sevenths and your ninths don't sound as good on the organ, uh, just by nature of the instrument. So when using that, that's again a flavor used with caution on that. Guitarists, when we're dealing with sevenths and ninths, are sevenths easy to play on guitar? Depends. Okay. <laughs> that's the right, that's a good answer. Yes. I, I, I disagree with you. It depends on what your registration is. Okay. Because if you're using if, if you're using a, a two and two thirds, one and a third, if you're using all the, uh, the the mixture things, then yes, it will sound bad. But if you use a basic eight, four, and two, okay. you're going to be fine. I didn't know that. I learned something today. Thank you. you that's why it sounded bad when I. You need a clear, bright texture. To use okay. That's why it sounded bad all the time I kept trying to do that. I had that mixture on. So, um, so that's with sevenths and ninths in there. Um, again, we're going to keep trucking because i got a ton of slides with this. Um, and then, so what happens when we don't even play the melody in that and you guys just sing this out with no melody. Here we go, sing one, two. And come thou fount of every blessing, tune thy heart to sing thy break. Keep going. Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Go, we can stop there. What's the feeling of that without a melody line in the keyboard? How does that feel? Jazzier. Jazzier? Okay. Gives it more like forward momentum. Forward momentum. More rhythmic. More rhythmic. Yeah, makes it a little more gospel-y, maybe. Yeah. I think it creates a little space so you feature the voice as the instrument. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. You gotta have unison singing. No part singing. Yes, that's the key too. How how many congregations sing in parts? Still, does anybody? Depends on the hymn, right? So 
again, when we're talking about um, context and, and that flavor, you know your congregations, so you know there's some hymns that Man, if I if I you know pull out a mighty fortress and do some funky stuff with it, that's probably not the that's probably not the Sunday to do that. So people expect that four part harmony there. Um, so that's again one of the key things that we can do is remove um, that melody from the lead instrument, um, and that kind of changes up the rhythmic function of what the team is able to do, especially with um, adding guitar in there. Um, sweet. Uh, nope, that was backwards. This, there we go. There we go. All right. So the next step we're going to talk about is venturing out of the key signature, um, adding something like a B flat. Some of you were like already like throwing some of that crazy stuff out there, because um, the key of C has how many sharps and flats? Zero. Zero. Um, so. What happens um, when we add in and introduce things outside of the key is we can kind of change the vibe of the song altogether. It's almost like switching from pepperoni pizza to like margarita. You know, the sauce changes a little bit. Uh, I should have kept all those pizzas up there and we could have labeled each one of these. So um, it'll sound something, you know. Um, so here how that B flat in the second measure because D is the third in a B flat chord that just changes your tonality Any thoughts on the feelings of that? How does that feel or sound? Country seven. Flat seven. Country. country country flat seven So we do like a uh, like a Really make a country. Um, you know your context. Some of y'all live in like Texas or a southern state. That would be okay. Probably not in the Midwest. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. It depends. Um, yeah, Memphis. That would, that would um, again, that would fit really well. Um, so what we're doing is we're borrowing chords um, from the parallel and relative minor keys. Do you guys remember those phrases from music theory or from piano lessons? Um, so our relative minor key is the one that shares the same key signature, which would be A minor. Um, the parallel minor would be C minor, which just shares the same name, um, which for most of my um, music education life I thought was completely pointless to learn until later in life discovering the joys of borrowing from those things. So um, if we look, um, oh is this a, this is a smart board isn't it? Oh I should have totally set that up. Um, so looking down here at while the hope of endless glory, so hope starts on a C, what are some options with that C in it for chords that maybe are outside of C major that have a C in them. What are some some chords? Well, you just said C minor. Um, C minor. Okay, so we got C minor. C a minor. A flat. A flat major, right? Yeah. Flat major. What was that? B flat dominant. Oh, there's always somebody. B flat <laughs> seven. All right, B flat seven. Yeah. Well, that would be the B flat seven. That would be an add nine, right? Yeah, that made B flat seven. Add nine, even cooler. You'd have to change the melody. So some, some of these, they don't work with the second note of the chord. You make that, like if we're talking about both, right? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I will pay you later for bringing that up. Uh, no, that's a good point. I was going to let stumble on that um, because the context of the measure does matter and impacts it. So a B flat here in this measure wouldn't necessarily work. Would an A flat work? No. Right, so we got what, C minor as well? But that doesn't work in text either. 
<laughs> no, not necessarily. De- depends. Maybe it's it's a unique sermon series that your pastor is doing on, I, you know, doom and gloom, <laughs> maintaining hope while in a, difficult, times. difficult times. Yeah, there could be a sermon series on that, and you want to um, try to try to shift things around. Um, Sweet. So, yeah, exactly. So we need to look at the context of the measure of the rest of the notes as well. I set you guys up with that one big time. I was like, let's add flats in here. Let's go. Ideas, board, boom. Um, apologies. That's like making a uh, bad pizza on purpose. Um, so jumping back up to the first line, though, that C there, all those chords that we suggested, there's that A flat until we get to the E. You can almost make a case for it. Um, C minor. Then you'd have to do E flat there and make it minor. Or B flat. That works, right? It's a little funky, but it works. So, um, again, when we can borrow from our minor keys, that provides some opportunities and options. Um, let's take a look at this one. Um, same key, right, as what we've been using. Um, All creatures. We've got a C at first. Um, What are some chords that have a C in it? Start throwing ideas out. C major, yes. A minor. F major. G suspended four. G sus four. D minor seven. D minor seven. We do have the holiest chords on the board, right? Jesus, that's the holiest. It's <laughs> a good one. What about a C major chord with a G in the bass? Okay, so like a C over G. Anything else? C2. C2. Y'all are safe. Where's the flats now? Y'all got scared of flats after the last one. <laughs> B flat nine? Yeah. So B flat nine. All right, so let's try some of these. There's the D minor. If we change to a G at the end, sing that all creatures of our God and King. All creatures of our God and King. And lift up your voice and with us sing. Yeah, a little different, right? Versus that tonic um, leading us off. That D minor changes it. Um, Let's try a different one. Let's try the A minor. Let's try the A minor. Here we go. Sing it out. All creatures of our God and King. And lift up your voice and with us sing. There's that B flat with a 13 on top. Um, Feeling-wise, how is that different than the traditional four-part harmonization of that hymn? Richer. Richer? Versus poor? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Which is one of the, I I think, the important reasons for reharmonizing hymns is it provides an opportunity to reflect on the words and the lyrics differently um, than singing it the same way. Mm-hmm. With some of these other chords, it wants to go somewhere, so it's going to give it more form and momentum. Yeah, and give it a push. And again, this is one of those things where this works really well in organ, um, as well on a hymn like this, uh, where there's less um, movement in your, your chordal motion. You're not moving every beat. Um, did you notice I didn't change chords until um, two, after two measures? So I did two measure phrases. Um, again, our traditional hymnody is usually every beat or every two. Um, that changes some of that feel and flow um, of those lines. Um, sweet. Um, has anybody else ever used one of these? They are funky. It's like, sorry, I have to point that out. It's, it's like a video game controller. Which, which way is the next? All right. So um, kind of swished in between there is moving that bass line while maintaining the same chord in the right hand. So going back to Come Thou Fount. Um, if we take our, our left hand and simply just move it down, right? 
right? We get that nice. Lift up every blessing to my heart to sing thy praise. Right? Right? So kind of funky, but it works. Will we take... Um, that is an A flat, taking the fifth out, moving it down to the fourth. So it's cheating there on that one. Um, so for your guitarist, it would be playing a C2 the whole time, and your bass player would get to move around. So it'd be C2. Every blessing, tune thy heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Um, which might make your guitar players upset because they play the same thing. But then the bass player can be like, ha ha, now what's up? Now you know what life is like uh, for my bass line parts when you write a C over G for the whole song and I'm just playing a G. So um, that's another thing um, to look at um, when we're altering some of these things is taking only one component and moving it and keeping something else consistent like a chord in the right hand. So it's doing the kind of the, almost the, the math of saying, okay, we've got a C here, we've got a D here, we've got an A, we've got a C. We can kind of fudge that A as a passing tone into the G, and then we just have a C2 sitting right there. So that's, again, one of those other options. And... Oh, real, real quick, yep. For the bass walk down, yes. Skip the seven? Like, what did you walk down? You so I went to a flat seven. Oh, you went to yep, flat I went to a B flat, yeah. Do you, like... Uh, why? That's what, like, do we just pick any kind of note walk down? That um, let's hear what it sounds like with the with the major seven. So come now, fount of every blessing. See how it kind of smashes up against that C two. I was just wondering if there's any like uh, like like reason for it. Um, I, I I just don't know because sometimes I'll yeah. be like, okay, well, why does this make sense? Yeah. So it's um. Let me use. Let me go back to the the analogy of, of that I started with of the the pizza thing. Um, so, like when we're making food and recipes, we get used to certain things that work well together. Um, and so, it's some of that. It's pattern recognition of oh, I've I've heard this phrase work before, and it flows well. So, it's some of that is just experimentation, right? When you're cooking, sometimes you got to try putting fish on a pizza. Uh, before you say it's bad. Not that bad. <laughs> um, so, so it's one of those things where, again, for me, I, uh, I've done a lot of experimenting with that, and so that's how kind of coming up with some of those ideas. Um, and that's my biggest encouragement as we're talking about these things. Go take these home and mess around. Like, mess around in the kitchen, okay? You can't, it's, it's not going to be easy. Um, to just come up with something that sounds beautiful, you got to kind of work your way into it. Yeah. Uh, if you want a technical explanation, look up Greek modes and see if you can find a chart that sorts the Greek modes from brightest to darkest. So if you go yeah. down to yep. a B, that's yep. Ionian. That's just a major scale. Yep. And that's a pretty bright mode. B flat is from mixed That's a dark yep. mode. That's yeah. the blue. Or you could experiment and find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, so sweet. And then uh, another step I want to just share with you guys, and this is kind of a, a, a trick that I use a lot of times with, um, with hymns and different songs, is um, this idea of a 2-5-1-4 progression. Who knows what that is? <coughs> Heather. <coughs> Heather, you're supposed to raise your hand, right? Oh, well, sorry, me? Yeah, you're supposed what to raise your hand. You know what this is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, so, so, two, five, one is a common jazz progression, and um, this is our side dish moment. Um, it, I would say it's almost as fundamental as a one, four, six, five. You guys know what that is, right? Yeah. Like a. It's like every popular song ever written is that. So a, a two five, um, two five one four sounds like that. We get common things like ba da ba ba ba. I'm loving it, right? A bunch of jingles are written that way. Um, there's some like Maroon Five songs there. 
So oftentimes leaving off the four, but when we're talking about hymns, it's nice to incorporate that. So in C, it's a D minor seven, G seven, C major seven, F major seven. This is one of those things that's like uh, salt and pepper kind of thing where it works with a lot of stuff. Um, so a lot of things you're able to just say, all right, I'm just going to throw a two, five, one, four in it, and, and it usually sounds good. So, Isn't that just a circle this? Yes, yes, um, starting on the two. Yeah, so it's going, so D minor G, going down a fifth, down a fifth, down a fifth. Does that make sense? So in the context of Come Thou Fount, if we play that. It's jazz, the seventh isn't. Isn't a mistake. It, it's jazz. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and so here, the uniqueness is that C is the seventh in D minor, the D is the fifth, the A is kind of our passing tone again. We're cheating there, and then the C is the fifth in F major seven. So if we sing that, it would sound like, let's well, sing it together. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune thy heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Good. What's the feeling on that one? Happy? It starts with a minor chord though. How can you call it happy? It works, yeah. Yeah. Wait, what was that in the back? Amen. Yes. Yes. They do, they do. Could you carry that same progression all the way through? Let's see. And then back to the same phrase. Do adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove. Yeah. It can work throughout the whole song. Um, now, maybe you want to change it up a little bit and not necessarily do that all the way through. Um, but that's always one of those tricks that I feel like works in a lot of hymn context. Um, oop, I went backwards. Um, so then the next is talking more about borrowing from the parallel minor key. And this is, again, another, another trick I've found that works a lot um, in hymns or other songs is taking that four chord and making it minor instead. This is used a lot of times in, um, I refer to it as like the Disney chord. So you have in C major, and then F, F minor. Right? It creates that kind of like that sense of falling back down. Right, and getting back to home. So, um, so that in this context, if we do so if we throw that D in there, but we play an F minor, see how that kind of hits? It works, right? It's funky. Tune thy heart to sing thy grace. How does that feel in the hymn? A little Broadway? Maybe, yeah. yeah. A little Disney. Where would that be useful? Yeah. Okay. Bits at the end of a song, you're not quite ready to end. You feel the tagline. Yeah. Tag line, so. Okay. Yeah. Some maybe tag. A reflective portion of service. Yeah. Maybe a reflective verse. Oh, to, like O oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now. So it gives us that reflection to think about, okay, what am I saying? Okay. Um, and changes some of that perspective on um, some of what we're saying and what we're singing. It makes us think about it differently versus, again, just that same kind of four part harmony. Um, so that's with adding a minor four chord. I've got a couple more, and then we'll talk uh, a little bit about some contemporary stuff. Oh, I went backwards again. Uh, <laughs> Come on. There we go. Um, so this is kind of mixing it all together and doing a one, a flat three, a four, and a flat six. Um, so our one chord is C, our, um, our flat three, 
what chord is that going to be? E flat. And then our four chord is is which which one? F. F, right? So we have C, E flat, F, and then what's our flat six? A flat. A flat. Is that not the weirdest thing in the world? Does it does it look like it's going to make sense? <laughs> or do y'all think I'm crazy? <laughs> We're uh, all right. Let's let's try it. Let's try it. All right, this is going to be some like uh, barbecue chicken right here. Here we go. Come now, fount of every blessing, tune thy heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Good. Super weird, right? Super weird. Who is uncomfortable with that? All right. Um, this is an open and honest room. You guys can share that. The E flat? The E flat three? So watch what happens if I throw in like a little a little melodic line. Come now, fount of every blessing, to my heart to sing thy grace. The streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. A little weird, different, right? Some context that can work. It's better because it's more of a passing tone, so yes. it's got a slight amount of distance. This doesn't quite. Yeah. Long. Yeah. Yep. Um, and again, like I want to keep going. Like I want to hear how it would, you know. How to finish it off? Um, yeah. Uh, let me see if the, if this is the last one, then we'll sing all the way through, and I, I'll get a little crazy with it and see who kind of raises eyebrows um, <laughs> on stuff. But um, so some of that stuff too is is finding that progression, but not just staying there with those notes, and then finding that that melodic line to go with it. That Which is really helpful for guitarists because that's the thing that they can plunk out uh, is that repetitive pattern. Um, no offense, guitarists, because y'all probably don't want to be playing those chords, right? Yeah. Or those cool chords on guitar. I'll just tell you to take out a cable, right? I just, <laughs> I just, <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> ah. Yeah, that may not be a capable, capo, capable, um, cap, capable, 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 <laughs> capable progression. So that might be a little challenging if you are a guitar-driven congregation. Um, however, again, you take just a piece out of it. So say we do. And just put those on bookend that. It changes it a little bit. Um, let's see. There we go. Oh, um, let's go back. Let's. Um, why don't we sing through? Why don't you guys stand up? Why don't we sing through the whole song? Sing through the whole song. Um, do you want to go like country, jazz, rock, reggae, reggae? Um, I'm not a super good reggae player. And uh, reggae in 3 4, is that a thing? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we can make that a thing? Um, all right, let's, let's try and see what happens. Here we go. Come now, fount of every blessing. Tune thy heart to sing thy praise. The streams of mercy never ceasing. Come for songs of loudest praise. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love, teach me ever. 
to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove. Yeah, man. All right, all right. Go to have a seat. Um, sweet. So moving on, um, we've got plenty of time. Can I ask you kind of a basic question? Yeah. As you're playing things that sound really good, kind of creative and all that, yeah. are you counting on the congregation or your singers to basically toe the line, sing the melody as written, and not have them get pulled over because you're doing some kind of cool stuff, and then the, and the people singing get confused? about what they're supposed to sing. Yes, this is all reliant on you having a singer that can sing it and not and get not pulled in. More like a praise band. Or, so you got somebody who can really Yes, strong yes, and absolutely. Yep, yep. And you can do your thing. Yep, that's, yeah. Okay. Um, it, uh, again, in the context of, like, say, organ, so if you're working with organ, you don't necessarily have that singer. So that's where what you choose to do or how much you choose to add in um, is going to be a bigger difference. So say on organ, for instance, um, it might be just simply at the end of the song, you know, Virtue adore thee, may I still thy goodness prove. And da da, as a transition, adding a flat six in there at the end, and then transitioning into like a five seven to bring us back around, is just enough texture change. Um, but again, you won't have the lead singer there unless, again, unless you have a singer with the organ. Yeah. Um, when I'm doing alternate harmonic arrangements, um, I make sure I practice that with my choir. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, so, like he was saying, they yep. don't get yep. a and you have filter. Or I make sure I have somebody at a mic who's a strong enough singer that can lead. Exactly, and the key with the choir is to make sure they know when you are doing this. Um, don't don't let it be a surprise where they try to they try to sing four part harmony, and then all of a sudden it's like, I am guilty of having done that. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't sound good, uh, so it doesn't turn out well. Yes, yeah. I think if your congregation knows this too, and they feel you kind of go away, they're going to step up and be leaders. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Keep, keep the melody going. Yeah. And let you do. Yep. And if you use an interlude to start the style of it, mm -hmm. then they'll often go with you that way. Exactly, yeah. Yep, and yep. It's like, you know, so I'm you know, a very contemporary church, and something that I introduced when um, I came into our team that was already established was saying, you know, we, de we never want to say, my congregation doesn't do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want to say things like, my congregation hasn't been exposed to that yet. Sure, my congregation sure. has not been taught that yet. And they will adapt. Yeah, will that's awesome. They will shake them a little bit, yeah. but they will see it differently and eventually grow. Sure. Yeah, that's an awesome mind. That's an awesome mindset to have. And again, I know not all of us are blessed to have that flexibility on some things. Um, some congregations, you throw in some hip hop uh, trap beats, overcome that fount, and um, that's 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 not a pizza that people wanted in in some context. So um, knowing your context and knowing what your congregation is okay with um, stepping out on is really important. That's true, and and it, it context of the the hymns, so yeah, which all creatures would be a great hip hop, you know, <laughs> yeah. it'd be epic. It really, actually, <laughs> <laughs> trap hats over everything sounds good. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, so um, we can take the same concept and 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 bring it over, port it into some of the contemporary music that we have um, today. So House of the Lord. Um, Right is, there's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. Super simple, there's what, three different chords there, right? Who's done this song in their church? Cool, cool, cool. Um, so... This is one where um, there's a lot of opportunity for flexibility on how we um, play this if our congregation is comfortable. Again, if they're not comfortable with the song, keep it the same. Um, but one of the ways we've done it is just by simply adding those major sevenths in there. Minor seventh, four chord, and then your minor four chord. Or over the fifth on the bottom. 
So it, it ends up sounding like, there's joy, or there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Yet. We shout out your praise. So give us a little more like jazz kind of vibe to it. Or um, almost like a slower coffee shop vibe if you've got a good acoustic player that can hit those sevens. Um, the nice thing is, again, with some of these popular songs, uh, we hear them so many times the same exact way over and over again. It's like eating, again, I wish I left the pizzas up there. Who, who liked pepperoni pizza? Okay, I apologize. This is, might be offensive. I get sick of pepperoni pizza. That's all my kids eat, and that's all I get stuck eating a lot. <laughs> all right, there's always that one person. <laughs> um, Okay, so in the same way with some of these contemporary songs, it's nice to not just have pepperoni and to say, okay, how can we add some, maybe not anchovies, but jalapenos, I'll take jalapenos, um, to mix it up a little bit. Um, again, something like that, uh, um, just adding those major seventh, minor seventh, works in a lot of different songs. Um, the uh, the other thing you can do is try changing the pro you know progression. So there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. Yet. We shout out your praise. So changing it up from not moving to or not staying on the B flat, but moving to maybe a C minor, just changes the tone of it um, and makes it sound or feel a little bit different. Again. Experimentation is the best way to find out some of this stuff, is trying it out and going, okay, was that good or bad? Um, and then what's the context for it? Um, sweet. Um, I'm about out of stuff, guys. Yeah, I should have prepared, prepared all the hymns, um, I guess. We could have just done a whole massive um, reharmonization of like four different hymns all at the same time. Um, I did want to mention, though, that sometimes when we're looking at some of these ideas, um, it's nice to find some resources that um, can give us some solutions. Um, so we don't have to necessarily get there on our own, but we can get some ideas that we can use in other things later. Um, so, for example, who's ever heard an album with hymn arrangements on them? You all have, right? Exactly. How could, have you all eaten pizza, right? <laughs> there we go. Um, so those albums are a great starting place to mimic what's going on there to get some ideas. A lot of times there's, there's, um, there's writers that do a fantastic job of adapting it for acoustic guitar um, and an arrangement in that way. And so uh, for me, sometimes I've figured out, you know, say I like how so-and-so did Come Thou Fount, but it also, that same progression or that same um, approach that they had can apply to another hymn. So by sometimes mimicking what somebody else has done and then maybe copy pasting that in terms of that style or approach can help us on another hymn. We do this with hymn tunes and text all the time, right? Where we take a, a hymn tune that works metrically with a text that maybe doesn't have a great melody, or we just blend them together. So it's the same concept. Um, a couple places for that, um, and this is where I'd love for you guys to jump in too, um, if you know of any places that have that. Um, but there's, I know the Hymnal Project's got some of these. 1517 Music is coming out with um, hymns, correct? Does anybody know? They've got some nice hymn arrangements. Um, there's praise charts. Um, does anybody else have any group suggestions that they found unique versions or renditions of hymns? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Changing rhythms, looking mm -hmm. for something for a, mm -hmm. a swing pattern. Uh, sure. You know, students like that, fucking things up. You know, gives you ideas for chord changes and substitutions uh, that are standard in other types of songs, mm -hmm. blues, things of that nature. And sure. It's probably, it lends itself to it opens your head a little bit. Uh, yeah. yeah. Essentially, I mean, we have great ideas. Cool. Cool. And that's one of the other positives about doing this is, is, is bringing creativity back into our church worship teams. Um, I, maybe a little bit of a rant. Um, I feel like as a church, we've 
outsourced our creativity a lot of times. Um, we, we give that responsibility away outside of the local church to more of the global church where, you know, rather than um, even writing music within our own context or arranging it, it's kind of just imported what's out there. Not that that's bad. I think there's a place for that. And there's something beautiful about singing songs that the rest of the world is singing uh, and the rest of the Christian church is singing. Um, but I also think there's opportunity for our congregations um, to utilize the creative people that are there um, and to, to utilize that creativity in a beautiful way in the kingdom of God. Um, so that's kind of my personal conviction about this and um, just kind of letting people loose on this and, and, and trying different things and being creative within the context of some of these songs. Yes, Heather? Oh, wonderful suggestion. Yes, if you do happen to um, really enjoy some of this stuff and it goes beyond just hymns and contemporary songs and writing your own music, there is an amazing songwriting initiative um, going on. Um, is, does Kip have his own booth or is he with... At the Concordia Irvine. At They've got all the materials. There's wonderful um, little flyers to take. There's a and great... We have a few cards here. There, There we go. Two weeks ago, so if anyone wants that and that information, and this is all being created by we're all in it, and there's John up there. Yeah. The and we all are working all the time on new songs to get to the church. Should I happen to see that posted on the DCE Facebook page? I believe so, yeah. National yep. DCE yep. Page. Yeah. yeah. I believe it was, yeah. For those of you who are interested, if you go to the National Oh, good. Oh, John has some too. Mm. Um, any? Do you guys have any other questions about that? Yeah. I just have a, just one more kind of remark. For yeah. The, uh, resources and whatnot. Uh, just part of best practices too. Just uh, yourself as a great example. Um, collaborations and just meeting people yes. in the church. Yes. Yes. Um, connecting with one another to resource for um, other arrangement ideas for him. I think it's one of the best. Yeah. Resources we have. Um, just to connect with one another to um, bring the church together. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I, I should have put my email up there for you guys. Um, to email me, if you do look up uh, Trinity Kalispell, um, my email's on the website there. But if, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great idea, Heather. Um, so if you have any questions um, down the road or want any help with anything, so you're like, hey, we have this hymn that we really love. Um, but do you have any ideas on how to make it, how to freshen it up? Um, send me an email. Um, get in touch with me. Again, love, I love connecting and sharing ideas with that stuff. Um, I know we didn't do a lot of, um, uh, we didn't really get into all creatures. That one's probably more flexible than Come Thou Fount because Come Thou Fount is in what time signature? 3-4. Three, four. Um, so unless you put it in 4-4. Four, four. Right, which we didn't talk about, uh, which can be done. And if you take a three for him and put it in four four, um, such as, come thou fount of every blessing, tune thy heart to sing thy praise. Has to have a pause there, but that can be done. That kind of stuff. Uh, but again, your congregation is going to react differently to that because it's not the same melody that they know with that pause there. Um, all of this stuff again needs context. Okay, we threw out some crazy ideas and stuff like that, but depending on the context of your ministry is going to determine what you're able to um, kind of share and pull out um, for them. Yeah? Um, just one note on working with guitarists on alternate. Um, as a guitarist myself, um, I'm doing changing harmonizations and stuff, is know who you're working with, and just as the average guitar player, you might have to sometimes as a guitarist are a little overconfident that, oh, I know how to play this chord, or they don't quite know how to play, so they'll just play the major or something else, and like, oh, the dominant seven says major seven, so mm -hmm. you have to kind of watch with that of, sometimes they'll think they know what they're doing there, it's not quite so, if there can be some clash there. That's a great point, yeah. Um, if you want to feel out where your guitarist is, just ask them to play a diminished chord and see what they do. Um, that'll, that's your indicator right there on um, where... Um, no, but uh, great point made because again, for guitar, oftentimes we use a lot of times the dominant seven, right? Is more common than the major seven. So, um, yeah. Any other questions, comments? Yeah. Probably more of a comment. 
that. Sure. Is that in churches that I've played in and been part of, uh, the thing, I, and without even going to the extra technique and spice and all that, mm -hmm. what I've heard from many people is if they've just heard the hymn played on a church organ, okay, they know what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. And then you do the same song, nothing fancy, but you got a piano, a bass, a guitar, and some mm -hmm. drums. Yep. And they, it's like they are just lit up. Mm -hmm. That just because of the different tones, it's the same song. Yeah. They can yep. sing it just yep. fine. Yep. But they yep. love it. Yeah. Yep, that can make a difference too, just changing the, the instruments used. And it can go the other way too. I've actually had some hymns where we've done them in our church um, with the band, and the congregation is like, huh. And then we do that on the organ, and they're like, ah, yeah. So it, it can go both ways, where there's some of those that, that fit better with the band because of some of the grooves and stuff like that. So, yeah. Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate y'all. Again, if you have any questions or comments, um, hit me up with an email, chat afterwards. But you guys got extra break time, snack time. So look at that. Look at that, y'all. <laughs>